piece. Make half an effort now. Mm -mm. Every means any possible alternative. Every means including all things. You need to do everything that's absolutely humanly possible within you. And it's not within you. And you can't handle it. And that may be a time to flee. <laughs> but if it's in you and you can bear it, what does it say, ma'am? It says, make every effort to live in peace with all men. To live in peace with all men. And that's talking about humanity. Mm -hmm. Whether they're saved or unsaved. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And to be holy. And to be holy. Because you got to be holy to do this. You got to have the Holy Ghost. I know some proper theologians, they don't like ghosts, but you need the Holy Ghost. They're rather translated spirit pneuma, but you need the Holy Ghost to help you be holy. You can't do this on your own. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You need God's spirit to, to be a, a, a paracletos, to walk beside, but to dwell on the inside. And this is not an endeavor that you can partake of on your own and be successful. So you need to pursue peace. Yes. And holiness. Mm. Because without the second part, it says you won't even see God. Yes. Come on, read it again. It reads, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. You're not even going to see him. And Jesus said that if you reject me, right now, you might be okay. I can forgive you. But if you reject him, mm. the Holy Ghost, there's no forgiveness in this world or the next. So without holiness, you won't see it. Mm. And that holiness that holiness is compartmentalized, which means that there's so much inside of it that allows us to be successful in other areas of our life when we're making decisions. Making decisions on how we can be more effective for God. The Holy Spirit is going to be my guide. He's going to be my roadmap. He's going to be my blueprint. He's going to be my GPS. So seek and pursue peace. Sometimes you make wise group decisions. Acts 6, 1 through 6. Sometimes uh, some decisions require other godly people to give us some direction and some encouragement, insight. And, and there are some things that we can discuss as a group and come to a consensus and we can receive the strength of every individual. And, and that's when, when, we, when we come together and we assimilate ourselves together and we share and exchange, uh, then it's almost, as the scripture says, iron is sharpening iron. We're, we're sharpening and encouraging one another and, and some decisions have to be made that way. In the first council of the early church in the book of Acts, there was a question about Gentile believers, which are people that were not part of the original covenant, and whether they not, whether or not the men had to be circumcised to be saved. And so Paul and Barnabas, they got with all the other leaders in the church and came to Jerusalem, and they needed to make a decision together. And in this particular case, Acts, the sixth chapter, you're going to see that there is a conflict that arises in the early church. There's Hebrews and there are Greeks. Because now the church is not just about the Jewish people, but now we've got some of the Gentiles coming in, and there was a conflict. 
It was a conflict over food. <laughs> they get more than we are. Yeah, in the early church, it's a conflict about food. And so the apostles, you're going to read it on your own, but the apostles, they got tired of dealing with that. So they appointed deacons so they could spend time in the Word and let the deacons deal with the human resources. But it was a group decision, and sometimes you can't do it on your own. It takes a collaboration, a collective conscience, mm -hmm. to help you decide what's the best thing to do next. And so these are these are resources, tools, actions, or how you deal with the with the with the quote. How do you fight fair? But then I want to give you this. Above all. And your conflict resolution, there has to be the administration of love. Yes. For God is love. Mm. And love is God. And in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the 13th chapter, and we're not going to go there, but it gives you a, a list of what love is like in action. Mm. All right. Love is not just gooey gooey. Ooh, ooh. That's that's what we painted out today. Love is kissing and hugging. No, love is more than that. Love is when I keep putting food on the table. Love is when I keep the lights on. That's love. You demonstrate your love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Yes. It's not easily provoked. It hopes the best. Mm. Even when the worst is there. Mm. It endures all things. It puts up with some stuff. That's love. Mm. Not to do it again. Ooh. That ain't real love. Mama showed me love. And sometimes I knew I was doing wrong. But she never turned her back on me. That's love. Love endures all. And I know I'm jumping ahead. First Peter 4 and 8. It says that love covers. It hides and forgives a multitude of sins. Because I know you acting up, and I need to give you up. Mm. But it's the love of Christ that strengthens me. It constrains me. It keeps me right where I am doing what I'm doing. It's love. Because you deserve something worse. Mm. Well, guess what? I deserve something worse, too. But it was the love of God through Jesus that kept loving me. That gave me mercy instead of the justice that I deserve. So in our conflict and our quarreling, we must learn to flow in love. Now, come and read John 13 and 34, and then you can, I just paraphrase 1 Peter 4 and 8 regarding love covering the multitude of sins. But let's look at the words of Jesus. Jesus says that this is your birthmark. Mm -hmm. I know today in the church, we're saying there's a whole lot of other evidence. For if you're speaking in tongues, I know you got Jesus. If you land hands with a say, I know you got Jesus. But what does Jesus say? Huh? Tell me what he said. It reads, a new command I give you. A new command. This is our Lord and Savior speaking. What does he say? Love 
another. Love one another. Love one another as what? As I have loved you. Now I've given you love, now you need to go give some. What does it say, man? So you must love one another. So you must love one another. And it says, what? What does this indicate when I do that? By this, all men will know. By this, by loving those hard-headed, fighting, quarreling, mean, nasty people. What does it say? By this, all men will know that you are my God. By this, when people are looking at you, you're going to have a testimony. Mm. They'll say, hmm, they, they're not a phony. Did you see what she did? But did you see how she responded? Wow! That's God's child. It has to be. So love above all. So that's the sources of conflict, the actions to take when dealing with conflict. And uh, as we go through this series, we'll discuss other things regarding conflict management. Uh, I'd like to, to share something from you from, from one of my classes. It's called the styles of managing conflict. And, and there's various different styles. And we may find ourselves at any of these stages, but, but be careful. One of the first things that uh, uh, Dr. James Flynn, he says is the turtle. The turtle is, is passive. The turtle does not necessarily want to deal with conflict. They run from it. They hide from it. Or something I thought about, or the ostrich. And there's, you need to take action. It's not going to go away. And we've already discussed the, the appropriate actions that can be taken according to the biblical perspectives that God has given in his word. Also, the lovable teddy bear. That just means I just keep giving in. Giving in and giving you your way. But all I'm doing is creating a monster. Mm. And I'm being a doormat. Mm. Right? That's not necessarily the best way to resolve conflict. Sometimes, yes, I can give in, but not all the time. Yes. And then there is the compromising wily fox, or like I, I like to call the politician. I'll meet you halfway. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes there needs to be full compliance, but sometimes you may be able to meet someone halfway. And then there's the aggressive shark or nuclear bomb. They destroy everything in their path. They don't care as long as they have their way. And that is totally out of order. There's going to be extreme chaos. And that will lead to nothing positive or godly. But then, one of the, the methods that, that he, he mentioned is the collaborating wise hour. And the wise hour says, let's work together. Yes. Now, I thought of a scripture, this being the model of God, go to, to Isaiah, and this is the last this is the last scripture for today. Isaiah 1 and 18 through 20. God is dealing with a situation with his chosen people, the Israelites. And the Israelites, Judah, which was in the south, and Israel, which is in the north, well, they have become like pagans, worse than pagans. God was very, very aware of their sin and their disobedience. That was a huge conflict. Their deliberate betrayal of God, just like some of us today, going against the grain, operating in the realm of disobedience with an atmosphere of rebellion. Mm. But we're going to see the loving heart of God. Yes. He's willing to reason with them. 
He's willing to give them a choice. And today, as well, we need to give others a choice. We need to show the same mercy to them that God has shown to us. And I'm not telling you to be a doormat. But I am telling you to give them a chance. Because even God, with the grotesque sins, God said, y'all become like Sodom and Gomorrah. You're supposed to be my children, but you're like that village that was practicing homosexuality and all those grotesque sins. You become like them. You don't even act like my children anymore. But he gives them an opportunity. He says that if you're willing to do this, then you can have that. Come on, you got it for me? Yes. Isaiah 1, 18 through 20, and we will end here at this, this scripture. Read it for me. It reads, come now. Come now! God said, I already know about it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, read it. It reads, come now, let us reason together. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's use some conflict resolution. <laughs> what does he say? Says the Lord, no matter how deep the stain of your sins. I know! I'm looking right at it, and I can't stand it. It stinks in my nostrils. Mm -hmm. Come on, read. No matter how deep the stain of your sins, I can remove it. But it doesn't matter how bad it is, I can fix it. Mm -hmm. If you bring it to me, I can fix it. I can mend it. I can heal it. I can repair it. Come on, read it. I can make you as clean as freshly fallen snow. You are filthy right now, but I can make you clean and white as snow. Let's talk about this. I'm going to give you a choice. Come on, what does it say? I'm not going to give you an ultimatum. I'm giving you a choice. Even if you are stained as red as crimson, I can make you as a white as deep, wool. Deep, red, dark, dingy stain. It don't matter. Bring it! Come on, read it. If you will only obey me and let me help you. If you can obey me, then I can help you. I'm going to give you a choice. Come on, what does it say there? Then you will have plenty to eat. All right. If you keep turning away and refusing to... God live. says if you're obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. Yes. From this point, I know you messed up. Mm -hmm. I know you've got a pass. Mm -hmm. But at this point, this is your opportunity. If you're going to obey me, then you're going to have some goodness. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus while you have time. Mm -hmm. But if you refuse, if you rebel, then you're going to be devoured, consumed, destroyed by the sword of sin. Mm -hmm. Come on, read it again for me, man. Um, it reads, but if you keep turning away and refusing to listen, you will be destroyed by your enemies. I, the Lord, have spoken. All right. So God was giving them a chance. Mm. And today, when we fight for a solution and our conflict management, we as well need to do the same. We should not write people off because God did not write us off. I know sometimes we can feel like somebody is beyond the help or the hope of God. But I don't care who you are, you cannot get beneath his everlasting arms. So the thought I'll leave with you today is we must commit to resolve the conflict. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come to Jesus. Come.